Hi everyone, this is Deb Tim and welcome to my channel. This is a new addition to my vlog on plants, although it's not directly about plants. I am going to show you how to DIY your own macrame hanger, so please stay tuned. This is not a typical plant video per se, but let's quick take a peek at the jungle before we begin. Every plant in here is doing so well. There's new growth everywhere. I think the plants know that spring is coming. Before I begin any task, it's important to me to have everything I'll be needing ready and at hand. Here are my supplies I use when making macrame hangers. I have my cord. I have some jute. Gives me some choices. Then I have my scissors, my darning needles, a bucket of beads, a clamp, and then my rings. So let's get started. I use this board and clip to hold my work. Now this hanger we're making today is medium sized. I cut the cords I need into six 12 foot pieces. Then slipping those six cords through the ring, I want the ring at the halfway point. Then I fold the six cords over and they become 12 cords, each about six feet long. So let's begin. So the first thing we need to do is bind the top. So I cut a three foot piece of cord and I'm going to slide the cord folded in half through the ring, then pull it over top of the ring and secure it to the top of my work. Now I have two shorter pieces that we'll be working with. Taking the two cords, we are going to start to bind the top of the hanger. So take your right side cord and lay it across the cords. Take the left side cord, lay it over the right, go underneath and through the loop. Then pull it tight. This is half a square knot. Next, we do the very same thing on the left. So we put the left cord across, right goes under and behind, then through the loop, and we pull it tight. Now we can continue working in this square knot pattern until we reach the desired length. Now you can make it as long as the strings are that you have, or you can make it short. It totally depends on what you like or what you think looks good. I usually don't make the binding too, too long. This one will probably be around four inches or I would say six square knots. So I'm continuing doing right side, then left side, right side, then left side and pulling them snug after each additional knot and you can see how nice that binding is going to look. Now there are many ways of doing bindings at the beginning of your macrame. Some people just wind um, the cord around it and pull it through to make it like a noose and some people just make a simple knot. So it's whatever you really want. But these two short pieces will disappear as we work because they will be worked into the knots to come. So that looks perfect. Clipping your hanger back up, I'll just double check. Yes, I have six knots. Now we'll begin by separating the cords into three groups of four. Now pick the cords that are closest together to make each grouping. Then flip the cords that are not in use to the back of the board just to keep them out of your way. 
Now remember, the two short pieces will be worked into the knots to hide them as we go along. When I'm doing this, I always have one of my cats pulling on my cords. So if you see odd movement, it's Della. She's on the floor beside me. Okay, and that small one will go with that. Okay. So the first four cords, I am going to start by making a two inch space from the top part to my first series of knots. So I'm going to again take the two outside pieces. I'm laying the cord across and I'm just gonna keep it about two inches from the top. So that's approximately two inches. And now I'm going to do the other half of the square knot. And it will be a full square knot. You just have to kind of jiggle it, and fuss with it until you get it to lay completely flat. There we go. So now I'm going to start the first series of knots. Okay, with the knot as our starting point, we are going to create a series of knots for this section, but we are only going to be working on the right side of our work. So we go across, under, underneath with the left one, around the back and through the loop, and then we pull it tight. And working on the right side, it seems to go quicker. When you pull your knots through or pull them tight, you don't have to pull them really, really tight. Just a good snug tug is all you need. So working on one side like this, you begin to see a twist forming. That's exactly what we want, a nice twisting pattern. Now, I like the twist and always add some to my hangers. Continue working, making your twisted knots until you've reached the desired length. It actually goes pretty quick once you have the hang of it. This really takes me back because I did this back in the 70s while I was full time raising my four sons. Yes, I am a baby boomer, 70s teen. I have to say in defense of that era, no music comes close to the amazing tunes of the 70s. This was such a big hobby back then. It's very cool to see how things come back around. Plants are another hobby that was hugely popular in the 70s. And now once again, it's becoming popular decades later. So I'm going to keep working in this twisting pattern for about four inches. I like to keep my spaces and knot groups similar in size. Although I'm not uber fussy and don't actually measure them, I just eyeball them. Where I add spaces, this is where you can add beads if you like. Today I'm going without. I do this in the evening in front of the TV or one of my other hobbies. I have not left our home in 18 days. Today was the first. The post office hours have been cut so hubby can't grab the mail after work anymore. I ran over because I was waiting for my yarn to arrive. I knit as well. I ordered yarn to make a couple sweaters. Okay, so I'm almost done here. See how nice the twist pattern looks? It's pretty cool. It kind of reminds me of when I tie my hubby's ties. If I do a half Windsor, it's kind of twisted. But if I do a full Windsor, it's a nice straight triangle. And that kind of is what this is like. But of course, here we want the twist. So one more. And there we go. 
So I clipped my work up higher. I've already done my two inch spacing and now we're going to work on alternating sides creating full square knots. There is the right side. Now we'll do the very same on the left side. And we will continue alternating, creating square knots, and we're going for about four inches. Now, if you do notice that you made a mistake and did two on the right side or two on the left side, eventually it will show up in your work um, if you look at it, but nobody else will notice. But the good thing about working with cords, it's no trouble pulling them back and redoing them. Just takes a little time. Believe me, I have done that many, many times. So we'll continue in this way until the square knot section is the same length as the twisted knot section, which is about four inches. Now, once again here, I'm going to make another space and switch my yarns again to keep my length even. So I'm going to take the two outside strings, put them in the middle and make my square knot. Now this is going to be about two inches and then we will start a new series of knots. Just pull that tight. There we go. Just measure it. Seems to be pretty good. I move my work up again. So now I'm going to, in this section, we're going to do the twists. So we're only working on the right side. And like I said, this seems to go a lot faster. Not sure why, but it goes pretty quick. If you see odd movements from my board or my um, cord, that's because Della is on the floor beside me and she keeps pulling the cords as they jump around off the floor while I'm working. Now I have tied a cord just for her on the back of a chair, but of course it just hangs there, doesn't move. So it's pretty boring. She prefers mine. Trust me, I am used to this with four cats. It's nothing new. So this section will be roughly the same length as the other knot series. Here you can see I've done the three sections the same. So now we're going to create the pot holder part. You take two of the cords from one of the arms and two cords from the next arm. Now holding these two cords together, you decide how far down you want to make your knot. The longer the space, the larger the pot. This space is about five inches. These knots you do want to pull nice and tight. Once you have the first round of the pot holder done, you can test your pot to see if it's big enough for the pot you want to use. At any time, if you do make a mistake or don't like something, it's simple to take out the knots. So taking the next two cords, we'll make the same knot in the same size and space. Holding the knots together, you can eyeball them just to see that they're pretty close. So we'll go ahead and make a square knot and pull it nice and tight. Yep, they're close enough. Let's just finish this one. Pull it nice and tight. 
Here we go. Check it again. That's pretty good. Okay. And now we're going to take the last two and do the same thing. Measure it to be about the same length. A little higher and pull it nice and tight. I do have to apologize for the footage. It's pretty bad that it's all squished down in the one corner, but you get the gist. So this is how it looks so far. Now we're going to make one more round just like the previous round, only we're going to make it a little shorter. This one is about two inches and we're just going to do square knots in the same way we did the previous round, only the space will be shorter. Now you can make the space longer. Again, that will dictate the size pot you're going to be able to use in this hanger. The pot I have in mind is wider at the top and smaller at the bottom, so I can make the bottom of the hanger a little smaller. So I'll just make another square knot here. And again, we're just eyeballing to make sure they're close in length. They don't have to be perfect. Sounds funny when I say that because I am a perfectionist. Then you want to pull that nice and tight and then we'll take the last two strings and do the same with them. Just make a square knot. You should be able to do these in your sleep now, huh? Another square knot and pull it tight. There. So now to finish and close up the bottom of this macrame hanger, we will take two strands on the outside of the 12. And I did my right half knot. And now I'm going to complete it with the left side. So I have a full square knot. There we go and pull it tight. Now this you do want to pull nice and tight. And again, the longer you make this space between the knot and your closing um, square knot will give you options as to the size of pot. This one is fairly small, so the pot I'll be using um, kind of narrows at the bottom, so that's why I can make it smaller at the bottom. But again, if you like it a different way, I can always take that bottom knot out and change it to make it suitable for a larger pot. So all done. Now the cords at the bottom, you can play around with them. You can cut them different lengths. I'm just going to leave them all like that. So this is the pot that this hanger was made for. It's a fairly small pot, but it's going to be very nice with a bright green foliage in it. And I will show you where I'm going to hang it. This is the foyer of our home. And the hanger I just made is the one on the left. Now I have enough room to put two more hangers there. I actually have hangers I can use too, so I might do that. Going through this difficult crisis with being isolated and staying away from people, we really need to keep busy because we'll drive ourselves crazy. So this is one thing that you can easily make and even use. I've actually made um, macrame hangers like this and I put them in the bathroom I have one hanging right by the sink and in it I have my brush, my comb, some makeup, 
There are so many uses for these, not just plants. You really just have to use your noodle. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you luck making your first macrame hanger. If you have any questions or need help, I'm always here. So until next time, this is Deb Tim signing out. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're all doing great. I wish you a great day tomorrow and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.